you see this pattern laid out time after time after time in Scripture. In fact, I don't think there's anybody that you could see in Scripture or in modern day. I know in my life, there has been no radical encounters with God that did not begin with my brokenness. You might ask yourself, well, man, I don't, I don't know, man. I don't know if the brokenness I feel is worth the access to the Father. This is a, it's a risk-reward type thing, man. This is, a, this, is a, this is a big proposition. Let me ask you something. I think we definitely got to look back at other people that we know experienced brokenness. You go all the way back to Genesis. Ask Jacob. Ask Jacob, whose name meant liar. When he heard his name, he heard the word deceiver. That's what his name literally meant in Scripture. <laughs> hey, hey, liar. Hey, manipulator. Hey, charlatan. That's his name. But one encounter with God where he, the Bible says he wrestled with the angel of the Lord all night long in the book of Genesis until that wrestling match ended with the angel breaking Jacob's hip and removing his hip out of socket. And as far as we know, it caused Jacob to likely walk with some sort of a limp. But in that moment, the Lord spoke to Jacob and spoke over him and said, your name's not Jacob anymore, son. Your name's Israel, Prince of God. Ask Jacob if the brokenness was worth it. Ask Moses if being broken for 40 years in the wilderness, for the middle 40 years of his life, living alone on the backside of a desert, breaking him of everything that he learned growing up as a son of Pharaoh in Egypt. Woo! Ask Moses if that brokenness was worth it as he led a million Hebrew slaves out of Egypt bond, the Egyptian bondage across the desert and toward the promised land. Ask Moses if that brokenness was worth it. Come on, somebody. Ask David after he struggles with his affair with Bathsheba and his brokenness drives him to his knees and he repents before God and he understands and realizes that God will not reject a broken man and then out of that marriage that he ended up eventually marrying Bathsheba comes Solomon and all the blessings of David's life. Ask David if the brokenness was worth it. Peter who stood at the side while Jesus was being tortured and going to the cross who denied that he even knew Jesus three times and on the third time the Bible says in the gospel of Luke or John that Jesus is actually in Peter's eyes meet from across the way wherever this trial is taking place the Bible says Peter and Jesus, on the third time, they meet eyes, and then Peter hears the rooster crow. And he remembers, Jesus said this was going to happen before the rooster crows tomorrow. You're going to deny me three times. The Bible says Peter went out and wept bitterly. He was so broken that when Jesus is resurrected and shows up to the disciples a few days later, he says to Mary and Martha, the women that he so saw to the tomb, he says, go get my disciples and Peter. That's how broken Peter was. Peter didn't even think he was a disciple anymore. He had to make the distinction because he knew Peter wouldn't recognize himself or identify himself with the 12 anymore. So he says, go get my disciples and Peter. And the last story we have in the Gospel of John shows Peter coming to Jesus after the resurrection, before he's ascended to heaven. And Jesus looks at Peter and says, feed my lambs three times. Feed my lambs. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. Do you love me, Peter? Yes, Lord. Feed my sheep. But ask Peter if that brokenness was worth it. A few weeks later, in Acts chapter 2, when the day of Pentecost came and the Holy Spirit was poured out on the earth, Peter stood up before thousands of people in a crowded street and preached a simple gospel message and saw 3,000 people get saved. Ask Peter if his moment of brokenness was worth it. 
<laughs> Ask Peter if he could see God working it all out. See, before Peter was broken, Peter probably would have thought just like a lot of me and you, I know just like me, Peter probably would have thought that he had something to do with that great message. Oh, man, I preached a powerful message, and all these people got saved because I'm Peter, and I've given up everything to follow Jesus, and I made it happen. But before that could happen, Peter had to break and realize he was only a man, and he could do absolutely nothing outside of the presence of God. Ask Peter if it was worth it. Ask Paul of being broken on a Damascus road on his way to incarcerate and imprison and execute Christians. Jesus showed up and broke him of all of his religion and all of his junk and all of his pharisaical mindset and all of his condemnation and all of that stuff. He broke it all out of him. And then Paul goes on to preach the gospel to the rest of the world. Ask Paul if that thing was broken. What I'm trying to say is if I will let the season of brokenness yes it hurts yes it's painful yes it is tough to admit that I don't have it all together yes it is hard to own when the thing that I've been building for maybe no fault of my own or maybe all the fault of my own is broken beyond repair yes that is not enjoyable to the Father. 